Good morning. How's everyone today? <laughs> it's an honor and a privilege to be here. My name is Lauren Burney. I'm from Pace University in New York City, and I just want to say thank you to Dr. Height, Dr. DeStrule, and our assistant director for all the support in this project. It's an honor to be here, and I'm really excited to talk about my project, but I promise to keep to my eight minutes, Brianna. So this is a multi-partner project, as the director mentioned, in New York City. It is currently, we have three core partners, which is New York City Public Schools, Pace University, and the Billion Oyster Project. Has anybody been to New York City? Raise a hand. Okay. So this is this harbor, and it, as lovely as it is and beautiful as it is, it's also very dirty. So we're focused on cleaning up this harbor with New York City public school students. We have 1.2 million students that are in those schools. So we're trying to teach them skills and help them do research in New York Harbor at the same time. This program started uh, with five pillars, the teacher training, student curriculum, digital platform, and after school STEM program, and community exhibits. We have a very diverse population. We work together with all of the schools. There is no barrier for entry. The five pillars that we have now still continue to function as they did in the beginning, but we have refined those pillars to make sure that what we're doing is effective, efficient, and provides clarity. These are some of the students that, are ex that uh, I work with in New York City Public Schools. As I mentioned, we have a very diverse, underrepresented population, and it's my joy to give these students a voice. This is difficult to see, but it's our research and evaluation plan, which is very important to me to make sure that we're staying on task and that as we are doing our research that we are not going down a vein that is incorrect. The magnitude of this project is very large, so we use smart sheets to chart our progress so that at any time should I drag Dr. Howard or Dr. Struhl to come visit me, they can know exactly what's happening in, in the various parts of the project. As you can see, it's not a clean project. There's lots of getting in the water, and, and also, you know, as science is, it's, it means getting dirty. It means, you know, working with mud. It means being in the oysters and these kinds of things. So Pillar 1 works with teacher trainings, as the director mentioned, and these trainings are focused on computational thinking. The students also present at the end of the year, each year, the work and research that they've done. So giving middle school students the opportunity to present their research is just really, really enlightening for us. The student curriculum is designed by the teachers. As a teacher of 18 years in biology and chemistry, it was very important for me to give teachers a voice. What's working in the classroom, what isn't working in the classroom, and how do we effectively teach students? As you can see, these students get really excited to get out of the classroom. As you can remember, as middle schoolers, right, you got a lot of energy, you got a lot of things that you want to do, and you want to be engaged. So problem-based learning, discovery learning, all of those things are components of this project. We also have a summer STEM institute. This institute allows for students to be able to not only work in classrooms, but to learn how to code, to visit the various STEM um, opportunities that exist in New York City, whether it's a startup or whether it's Google, somebody that's in place for a very long time. A component of this project that's very important to me is enlightening students in STEM careers, particularly middle-level STEM careers. The digital platform serves as the hub and the information for students to be able to access whether it be a, global, a citywide initiative or global. This is a citywide initiative, I want to mention, but it is something, a model that we want to take globally. Pillar four is the restoration science hub, so students go out and measure the various components of the oysters as well as the uh, water quality and all of the different species, and you never know what you're going to find in New York Harbor. <laughs> Truly. Um, th these are the students doing research. We have initial pilot that has given us very great information in terms of the teachers and the engagement of the teachers in these fields and their excitement for wanting to learn environmental science through computational thinking. We hope in the future, so we talk about impact. Very important to me, the deliverables, what's coming out of this, what are we doing, are we actually accomplishing things. I don't want just a one-off project. To me, it has to have longevity and sustainability, long-term deliverables for NSF. Potential STEM Learning Center over in Red Hook, if you want to come visit. We have currently impacted 5,600 students, 127 teachers, et cetera. The deliverables that come off of this project, as I mentioned, come from the dissemination of the team. It's not just me going out and speaking, but the entire team that does trainings and speaking in order to get this information out. As you can see, how could you not love these kids, right? They're just engaging and fun and exciting, and this, this uh, project is truly my passion. Uh, some of the impacts that I just want to speak to real quickly in my four minutes 
is the global and community. So it's a community effort. This has been known as the signature <laughs> grant of New York City. We have involved not only citizen science, because that term is now community science. So engaging a community, whatever that community may be. I dragged uh, Dr. Destrul to the New York Aquarium to our exhibit. We have an exhibit that's going to be permanent there, and it's opening this fall. I also dragged Dr. Howry. He's a great captain boat simulator. So we have simulations and things that the students do to learn how to drive boats. We also have the exhibit, as I mentioned, at the New York Aquarium. Opportunities also exist for the living breakwaters in Staten Island. These are the students working on putting the oyster restoration into the water. We also want to see, this is 2022, a vision that the EPA is also funded in terms of creating opportunity for teachers, students, scientists, faculty, everybody to interact in these wonderful communities, as well as in Staten Island. It's a balance. It's a very big balance to be able to say, how, does, how do you manage all this? And then you have a day job, Lauren. But it happens. And, and because you're passionate about what you do, because what you are doing makes sense, and because you are there for students, right? I always keep this picture in my office. You know, the research and everything, sometimes you become thick in the weeds and you think, OK, why are we here? What are we really doing? But I always keep this picture of, we're here for kids. We're here to help underrepresented kids have a level playing field. And how do we do that through computational thinking? Lastly, there's days that I feel like this. And I was really upset when they moved her because she's no longer there. Has anybody seen this? OK. So they moved her in front of the stock exchange, which is also equally as daunting. But there's certainly days that I feel that uh, you know, some of the challenges, can you overcome that? Can you, can you, how do you manage to be able to overcome that? And for me, every challenge is an opportunity for growth to do something better, to do something more creative, to do something more innovative. So it's my honor and privilege to lead this project as PI, and it's my honor and privilege to be here. Thank you to all of you for your support. It's, it's really a pleasure. Thank you.